Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Investigators in Cars Drinking Coffee. I'm your host, Mark Mernan, President of Complete Legal Investigations in West Palm Beach, Florida. Joined once again by our resident expert, Wendy Strom Mernan, Licensed Private Investigator, Certified Paralegal. And today's- There's only two of us, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Our, our dynamics, you know, yeah. uh, plus a host of subcontractors that we faithfully right. utilize to do great work. Who are the real us. experts? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then, um, where today's topic anyway is on the subject of mitigation investigations, yes. and we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. But first, uh, here's a word from our sponsors at Orep Insurance and Working PI Magazine: Insurance for the Licensed Private Investigator. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance nationwide. Get your quote at OREP.org today. Wendy, our topic today is mitigation investigations. Yes. So, what is a mitigation investigation? Well, mitigation is when you've got a capital felony case and that capital felony, that defendant is found guilty there is a second sentencing um, per the uh, mitigation statute. Our state, Florida, has a mitigation statute that um, determines uh, any you know aggregating factors and mitigating circumstances as far as um, you know what this person should be sentenced to, life or the death penalty. Okay. So, what is an aggravating? What is an aggravating factor? Well, an aggravating factor is something that makes the sentence would be harder. It would be harsher. There's reasons uh, they've done some things, and they have in the statute what these are. Um, you know, and these are statutory. Yeah, statutory uh, and outline. Of, and the state will introduce evidence to right, advance and, their right. Right. So they're trying to prove these aggravating factors. What would be an example of one? Uh, heinous atro hack, heinous, atrocious, yes, and cruel. Yes. Uh, executing someone versus just you know shooting them in the course of a robbery. Right. Uh, executing them with a you know. A, Shot yeah, to the head or gang a, membership is one. Gang membership is another we've one. We've had, yeah. and then the mitigation circum, the mitigating circumstances are things that you know would say, well, this person went through this, that, or the other in his life, and this is why he's this way. Um, some social things, or he's turned his life around. Um, he's done really well in prison. You rehabilitation, know, any, rehabilitation. Pot a potential for rehabilitation. Yes, yes. Mental health issues, or those could those be a mitigating factor? Well. They haven't been in our cases. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they are. If you it's, can show a diminished capacity. Yeah. Um, uh, so it just depends on the particular yeah. circumstance of your case. If but, they grew up, you know, in a very, very dysfunctional family with drug abuse and, you know, domestic abuse, things like that. So, yeah. yeah. So there are mitigating factors. And right. what, do, what is a mitigating, what does a mitigation expert do? Well, what uh, we do is it's basically a social background on your client, on the defendant. And uh, your inter it's a ton of interviews, all family members, friends. You're trying to find anyone that can tell you something, you know, uh, something good about this client or something they went through. You know, you're just doing a complete social background and also ordering a lot of records, employment, school records, medical records, anything you can find um, that might help explain why this happened to this person. You're really trying to give some context uh some context on the background of this individual he you're making him or her more three-dimensional than yes. than the prosecutor will the prosecutor this is an evil person who deserves the death penalty right uh and our your job as a mitigation expert is to put the individual in context right right you know, there's reasons why people do things exactly and you're trying to flesh those out right so you've right. been all over the place you've so been it's actually a plea for mercy yeah for the defendant. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, is, it yeah. is. Now, how long do these cases go on? They go on for years. So when you commit to one, it's it's gonna be years. Maybe your work won't last years, but uh, in the trial, there's a second trial um, after if the defendant is convicted. So, I mean, you just have to stick around for a little bit for these, yeah, yeah. yeah they go on and on. And as obviously, uh, you have the trial if the, if the if the person is found guilty and then they enter the sentencing phase, that's another trial, which sometimes exactly. sometimes it follows immediately after the trial, uh -huh. other times it doesn't. Right, I don't know if anyone followed the Nicholas Cruz case down here. He was the shooter at uh, the high school in Broward County. That His was two or three months long and uh, they did not give him the death penalty. Yeah. 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 So these are, uh, these are, you know, very intense battles. Are they rewarding? Well, I, I, 
you know, that's a yes and a no, because if you go by the results of what happened from, you know, the trial and the mitigation, the second set, you know, the sentencing, and you don't, he gets life or the death penalty, it's, it's devastating. But it is very rewarding because if you like people and you like talking to people and you yeah. like ordering, you know, finding out, getting the story, the drama is incredible. Um, it's, so I find it very rewarding. Not only that, in, in our state, it pays 50% more than um, just a regular criminal investigation. So, so to it, me, it has some yeah, financial, financial benefits from taking on very yes, difficult definitely. cases. Yes, like definitely. And yeah. so I find, and I have to really um, use my creativity and my brain to the maximum. Uh, so, you know, uh, yes, I find them very rewarding. Oh, that's excellent. All right. Well, folks, we've got some a uh, couple of manuals that are available on our website, theprofitablepi.com, that kind of lead into these. Number one, of course, is the Investigative Procedures Manual, uh, which talks about the investigative procedure. But also, Wendy's written a manual called the Research Procedures Manual, which contains a tremendous amount of information on gathering public yeah. records, uh, school records, uh, a host of uh, other records that are uh, the result of research. Uh, and so I would commend those to you, uh, those two manuals to you. And again, those are available on theprofitablepi.com, theprofitablepi.com. So. Right. And what would you say would qualify someone to be a mitigation specialist? Well, uh, that depends on the state. Uh, a lot of people with a social history background, but in Florida, all you need to do is be a licensed private investigator. Right. Uh, but there are people, social uh, uh, MSWs, Master in Social Work, yes. uh, mental health clinicians, uh, all these play a role in that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've known people from all over the gamut, professional gamut. Uh, but uh, to be a good mitigation specialist, you do need a network of uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, counselors, nurses, anybody else who can help you to you uh, find them. Yeah, yeah. You find them yeah. There. yeah. Anyway, thanks again for joining us. Uh, again, visit us again at the Profitable PI and check out our manuals. And we will see you the next time on Investigators in Cars Drinking Coffee. Bye bye.